One of the amp models we have in the Helix that I hear the most complaints about has got to be the Brit 2204. Now, this is an amp model of a Marshall JCM 800 2204. As the name would suggest, this would be the 50 watt version. There was also a 2203 version of the JCM 800, which would have been the 100 watt version. Now, when I hear these comments, and I hear them a lot, folks say the Brit 2204 just does not sound like a real JCM 800. When I hear these comments, it always makes me wonder though, how are these comparisons being done? I, I do know from speaking to a lot of folks that for the most part, folks don't really do comparisons properly in any way that's going to give you any real true information. For instance, if you're standing in your room with your JCM 800 2204 plugged into a 412 Marshall cab and you have that cranked up, that's going to be a very specific sound and feel standing in that room playing through a real guitar cabinet. Now, if we took what we heard there and tried to compare that, let's say, to sitting down at our desktop, firing up our Helix through a pair of studio monitors, and then putting on the Brit 2204 and saying, well, these don't sound the same. Well, of course they're not going to sound the same. We're playing one through a raging 412 guitar speaker cabinet and the other through a much smaller set of studio monitors. Now, anytime we do any of these comparisons, we have to have only one variable involved. We need to have whatever it is we're trying to compare. In this case, it would be the Brit 2204 versus a real JCM 800. They would have to be played back through the exact same monitoring system and at the exact same volume or as close as we could possibly get them. Now, here's the other problem. If we line up five JCM 800s, we would likely have quite a variety and even the tonal differences between those five models of the same amp model. This is quite common with tube amps. There could be many variables, the age of the tubes or the brand of the tubes you're using, amongst many other things. So you can see that this is not really something we can just throw out there and say, oh, the JCM 800 2204, Brit 2204 and the Helix is terrible. Terrible. It's not accurate. Well, accurate to what? From my understanding is the folks at Line 6 used their JCM 800-2204 that had the bright cap removed, which would dramatically change the sound of the amp. And I think that that's fairly common knowledge now, and I hope I'm correct about what I've read about that. So that alone would make a huge difference. But again, if we don't compare apples to apples, we're going to have a hard time really knowing. The only way to know the quality of this particular amp model would be to have the very JCM 800 that the folks at Line 6 use to create the amp model and then do a proper comparison where we play both the Helix version and the real amp through the same monitoring system with the volumes match so that everything else was the same. Now I can imagine the folks at Line 6 did this and we're probably happy with the results. So just because we don't like the Brit 2204 doesn't mean there's anything necessarily wrong with it. And yeah, it may not sound like some other folks' JCM 800s. Well, last week I did a video about the Marshall Studio series, which are kind of mini recreations of some of the classic Marshall amps. And I have in my possession the Marshall JCM 800 Lead Series Studio Classic. Now, this is a mini shrunken down recreation of a JCM 800 2203. At least that's what Marshall claims it to be. This runs either at 50 watts or 20 watts. So it's obviously not going to be exactly the same thing. But when I did the video on this, not only did I realize just how great this sounds and how great a job it does at capturing that JCM 800 Vive, when I did the video, I had tons of requests for people to say, can you please compare it to the 2204 model that we have in the Helix? So I don't really know what this proves. Uh, I'm not really trying to prove anything. And I need to put this disclaimer out there. I'm not trying to make the Helix look better or anything like that. I thought this would just be a fun comparison comparison. Number one, to see what the differences are between this so-called recreation of the 2203, which again would be the 100 watt model of the JCM 800 versus the 2204 in the Helix, which would be the 50 watt version of it. But I thought, let's do a little test here. So the neat thing about the JCM 800 Studio is that it has a direct out. So I took that direct out, I plugged it into my audio interface, I then reamped both a rhythm guitar and then a lead guitar snippet 
through the real amp at various settings. And then I applied to that direct sound an instance of Helix Native with only the stock cab, which was the Greenback 25, loaded in. And I'll show you the settings I used for that. I then duplicated that DI'd guitar I used to reamp and I put an instance of Helix Native on each and recreated the identical settings that I had on the actual amp with that same stock cab. So all the settings were the same. I then volume matched them. So everything else is going to be constant. The only variable is going to be, we're going to hear the real Marshall amp versus the Brit 2204. So this is about as scientific as you can get, but also keep in mind, these are completely different amps. I don't expect them to sound the same. While I would never usually do a comparison by just setting all the knobs and controls to the same place, I wanted to do that to start off with this particular comparison, just so we can hear what the differences are going to be, the differences that we should expect since we are dealing with two completely different amps. Then from there, I wanted to say, okay, let's take those and let's see if we can't grab one of those and with minimal tweaks on the Helix, get it in that ballpark. And I mean minimal tweaks, not throwing a bunch of fancy EQ on or anything like that. Because I think this comes down to what folks feel about the Brit 2204. They feel it's unusable or they feel they can't get anything good out of it. And I want to try to show today that I don't think that's necessarily accurate. I think with a couple very minor tweaks, we can get that amp model sounding really, really great. So I'm going to play you those files now. First and foremost, most, I'm going to put up on the screen the stock cab setting I used for both the real amp and for the Helix native files, which I used Helix native in this case just because it was far easier than having to reamp through the Helix. So this is what those settings are, as you can see, no lower high cut and SM57, just one inch back. This was applied to all the sounds you're going to hear. You're also going to see up on the screen the settings for the real amp when it's playing and the settings for the Helix when it's playing. So give those a listen and then I'll come back and give my impressions about what I think of those sound files. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, what did you think? Obviously, dramatically different, as would be expected and as I've already mentioned. But it gives you a very clear idea of what the difference is here. And again, of course it's going to be. These are completely different amps. They're in the same vein, I guess, but they are completely different amps. So my impression was that the Helix had a fizziness, a brightness to it, which is kind of funny since the, apparently the bright cat was removed from the JCM800 that the Helix was modeled after. Uh, but don't necessarily think just because you hear that out of the mix and you hear that fizz or that brightness that that is necessarily a bad thing. It is quite easy to remove that if needed, but I always lean towards being a fan of having some of that in, which can oftentimes help a tone sit in the mix. As we've all listened to before, maybe some of our favorite songs, we find the isolated guitar tracks and we find, wow, those are like way fizzier and bright than we thought. But that in itself helps it to sit in a mix both in the studio and live. So it's not necessarily a bad thing and it can be fixed quite easily. Now, the other thing I noticed is that the Helix version had quite a bit more gain when those gain settings were set quite high, a little more saturation to my ears. So what I did is I took took the final setting five. I'm not going to go through all of those tracks I just played you in know, all of those settings, but I took setting five and I thought, how can I tweak the Helix version really quickly with minimal, minimal tweaks to get it at least somewhat more in the ballpark of the real Marshall amp? And what I did is two things. I brought the gain back and I went to the cab and I moved the high cut down to 6.5 kilohertz. And that is it. Now, I'm not stating that this matched the sounds, but it's amazing that with those two tweaks, we did get in that ballpark. So I want you to take a listen to these. The settings will be up on the screen as I go. I won't show you the cab settings. You already know the only difference is 6.5 kilohertz is going to be the high cut setting on the Helix version. <laughs> So what was my point of this? My point was not to say, oh, look, the Helix sounds exactly the same as this other amp that it's not supposed to sound like because it's a completely different amp. But I had so many people request to hear the comparison that I thought it would be fun to do. But I think the takeaway here is that if you feel that the Brit 2204 is unusable or it's just not going to work, I think that with a couple little tweaks, and hopefully you saw how I approached that today, that you could use that and get it closer to maybe what you're hearing in your head or closer to what you need. And if that's the takeaway from this video, then I'm super happy if it helps anybody to be able to utilize that amp model, which I actually quite enjoy. I also have up on the Line 6 Marketplace for Helix, HX Stomp, and Pod Go, the 2204 Ultimate preset that I've utilized that amp model with a full pedal board of effects and whatnot. And it's ready to go for studio and live. And I use that preset a lot myself. So the link will be below for that if you're interested in that. So I hope that that was at least enjoyable and interesting. Thank you guys so much for sharing your time with me. Please like the video and, and please share it with anybody who you might think would enjoy it or find it informative. And also please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. Thank you guys so much again for sharing your time with me. I will be back really soon with some more content. Ciao for now.
Thank you.